Today, we're going to talk about the previews that have come out for the final two episodes of Season 1 of Murder Drones. And yes, the Glitch account has confirmed that these are just the last two episodes of Season 1, indicating we will be having a second season, which is very exciting, as this one is already building up to be quite climactic. My name is Drone Cut. subscribe for weird esoteric robot lore, and let's dive into it. Now, the first big preview they released was a trailer for the final two episodes, though it was largely made up of clips and lines from previous episodes, with only a few little nods to what is going to happen next. This included a sequence where N and Uzi find each other, lace fingers, and have an emotional hug, with Uzi even crying a bit, and N talking about how he knows he needs Uzi and that they will find a way out of this together. Following this, we get a mysterious shot of a dark room with what looks like skulls and bones everywhere, and a wide shot of a large cathedral-type building underground guarded by sentinels with another human skull in the corner. All of these were fun, but what really tied them together was the later preview image released on Glitch's community tab, which featured two drones that fans believe are Uzi's mother Nori and Dahl's mother Yeva. So how do all of these connect? As time goes on, the story of murder drones has become tied to the story of Uzi and Dahl's mothers. When the murder drones and worker drones made contact in the pilot, Uzi began developing strange powers due to some backup protocol she had called the Absolute Solver, with Dahl being revealed to have had these powers for a while. This Absolute Solver is the same protocol that activates when a disassembly drone is destroyed, allowing this base AI program to take over the remaining machinery and slowly piece together its original form. The Absolute Solver was later revealed to be the base AI that runs the worker drones with an operating system thrown on top of it to limit the AI to the intentions of the creators and its machinery. When a worker drone is not properly disposed of, the base AI can boot up without the worker drone OS and is considered a dangerous zombie drone. This raw AI was likely used to program all sorts of different types of AI-based technology back on Earth, with worker drones just being one example of this, with the base AI being dangerous in and of itself because it has no limitations. And there always being some sort of limiting OS that it is meant to be funneled through to fulfill a specific duty. This would mean the worker drones, without their operating system, are an intensely powerful artificial intelligence in a humanoid body, one that likely runs its own programming and machinery too hot, hence why heat makes them go into stasis or even shut down and die. Now, this AI has managed through Sin to create something of a network for itself in order to enact a greater plan, which supposedly involved destroying the Earth in its entirety and sending the disassembly drones to destroy all the worker drones on Copper 9. The Absolute Solver is the source of power that Uzi and Dahl have, and both believe it was passed on to them from their mothers, Nori and Yiva, though it is not exactly explained how this sort of malfunction got passed down. A worker drone child is a combination of the worker operating systems of both their mother and father, and even if one or both of them has malfunction and had the Absolute Solver take over, that is a hardware issue, so the worker OS shouldn't inherently be able to pass that on. It may be that the Absolute Solver has programmed some sort of exploit that was given to Nori and Yiva and was passed on to their children that allowed the Absolute Solver to kick in partially, allowing the Worker OS to exploit the lack of limitations of the base AI, but this hasn't been confirmed. Regardless, Dahl and Nori to this point have been determined to figure out what was wrong with them and maybe find a cure by finding out exactly what happened to their mothers, who were both supposedly killed by disassembly drones early on. Uzi's mother Nori had actually begged her husband to make three doors that could stop the disassembly drones, indicating she already had information that they were coming, but Khan did not listen, and Nori supposedly died that day when Uzi was just an untrained drone pod. Dahl's parents, likewise, were supposedly killed in a battle with disassembly drones, with her even seeming to have their corpses in her home. How then can there be Nori and Yiva in this strange underground cathedral? When Uzi blew up Jay in episode 1, she was restored by the Absolute Solver to some degree in episode 2. Nori and Yiva may likewise have had the Absolute Solver restore them from some piece of their original machinery, and then had them go down into the cathedral. Despite seemingly being destroyed again at the end of episode 2, we saw Jay land on Copper 9 with Tessa, and later, Jay explains that the more useful drones were cloned more. This implies not just that there are more Jay clones out there, but that there are even clones of N and V out there, just not as many as Jay. 
The Absolute Solver thus has to have backups for all of Tess's drones and likely would have backups of every other drone that they have gained some sort of control over, such as Nori and Yiva. These two drones may just be pure duplicates of Nori and Yiva then, perhaps being reconstructed long before Nori and Yiva's original deaths when the originals were up on the surface living their lives and having children. The cathedral is at the very bottom of the strange campsite building, with there already being many lower levels before coming to the special elevator that needed a special key to get into. This area seemed purposely set up to be the most guarded by sentinels, who are specifically used for knocking out worker drones and destroying them. Even the cathedral itself has sentinels outside, though they are chained up. This seems to be so that no new drones can get in, but it also ensures that the sentinels don't turn around and surround the cathedral itself and the drones who may be inside. Like with the building as a whole, this is a place I imagine to have once been primarily for the humans who lived and worked on Copper 9, with this having been described so far as the most secret layer of their laboratories. Whatever humans might have survived the explosion here below the surface seem to be killed by drones, perhaps even by these duplicates of Nori and Yiva, with their bodies being left to turn to skeletons as we see with the skull near the cathedral and the strange red area in the dark. According to Tessa, the only way to stop the Absolute Solver is to get the list of names of everyone who has been infected with the Absolute Solver's powers, even if still running a worker OS, and then destroy them entirely. This is because every time someone like Uzi uses the Absolute Solver's powers, the Absolute Solver takes a little bit more control of their bodies. This would imply even the disassembly drones might have to be destroyed at some point, though Tessa mostly focuses on how this is the fate of Uzi in particular. The trailer ends with a dramatic moment of Uzi and N coming together and N promising they will figure a way out of this together because he can't bear to let Uzi go, indicating he will go against Tessa in episode 7 or 8, and that will either set up a great finale or just the general plot for season 2, where Uzi and N would be working against Tessa as a villain. While down in the cathedral, the characters would get to meet their moms, or perhaps just versions of them, ones who don't know or care for Uzi and Dahl, but who may just be slaves to the Absolute Solver at this point. They may also be the opposite, drones that are basically trapped here because of the Sentinels or using it as a security to stay away from Absolute Sin's forces, while hoping that others like Uzi and Dahl would find their way to them. With there being two episodes left this season and so little shown in the trailer, I have to imagine there's going to be some really cool revelations in these final two episodes that will make these theories very much seem like they're surface level. This show has been known for every episode being a sort of big dramatic twist that gives you a recontextualization of the key aspects of the lore and how it works, and I have to imagine they save the best for last with these final two episodes. Right now, both episodes are said to be airing in spring of 2024, which can flexibly said to be anytime between February and May, though it's probably safer to say March as the earliest we might see an episode, and with Murder Drone Season 1 wrapped up, I'm hoping we can get some more amazing digital circus to fill out the rest of the year, and that could give Murder Drones enough time to produce Season 2 to come out at a relatively consistent pace next year. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time.